Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to discern some more people who friend request me. I got to be this way. Amen. Because you know, when you have an anointing upon your life and you're preaching the truth, everybody in church doesn't always like the truth. You know, if you tell people, if you spend three times, you're going to have a house by next week. Or this, oh, I love preaching Warren. Oh, he told me I'm going to get a house. He told me I'm going to get a car. Oh, everybody's shouting it. Everybody said, oh, he's a dogmatic speaker. If he gets jumped three times, running around the church eight times, you're going to have $1,000 by tomorrow. Or they're going to say, oh, he's a true man of God. But when you start preaching against adultery, witchcraft, fornication, every message that God gave give me for God's people is not always a dashing and a shouting and blessing the miracle message. Don't get me wrong. God can bless us. You come out, you come out of mess, God will bless if we keep God's holy words, if we keep his commandments, according to Deuteronomy chapter number 28, start from verse 1 to verse 14, then he will bless. So I want to so discern some friend requests here. Praise God. I got some people who friend request me from Refuge Temple, my old church I came out of. Lord, touch them in the ambulance. Touch them right now in the ambulance. Who's ever sick in that ambulance, Lord, heal their sick body. Come on, pray with me, saints. In the name of Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost because the Mari ain't promised to, to none of us. That's why God said today, if you hear my voice, heart not your heart. Okay, I'm going to discern some friendly questions. I'm not going to say any names because I'm a, I'm a very respectable man. And I don't like to tell people's business. If I do, I don't call the name. Me being a pastor, praise the Lord, God also made me a watchman. He gave me a gift of discernment. Oh, another young lady friend requested me here. I knew her since she was a child. I know you got molested when you was a child. I know you've been sexually abused by your father. I've been praying for you. God bless you, young man. I'm happy to see you. God is with you. Have a great day today. Thank you. Thank God for that young man. God is saving him and filling him with the power of the Mahayim of the Holy Ghost. I know you've been sexually abused as a child. I know your situation. What I'm not understanding is that you growing older, you've been sexually abused all this time. I know you was, I saw you riding on the motorcycle with your father late at night. I think it was around two, three in the morning time where I was living up in New York City. I was born in Harlem. Raised in the Bronx and Harlem and giving street meetings and I was up two three in the morning and I saw you riding on The motorcycle with your father I said Lord, that's kind of peculiar She like you was happy at the time you were smiling and she like you was having a good time and Okay, so I didn't want to think nothing too much of it because I'm not a fault finder But I felt something strange behind it. And then I began to find out the aunt called me up the Aunt called me up said she asked her niece was her father sexually abusing her? And you told your father, yes. You said your father had made you give him a blowjob. That's nasty. Now, I believe you was around 29, 28 years old. So I know you had to be in your 30s right now. What I can understand, I know you got saved at an early age. You got the Holy Ghost at an early age. And you came to my service with your sisters and your friends up in Bishop Bell Church when I preached and God have anointed you, he was blessing you and you were praising the Lord your friend told the testimony how she was in the bloods and God set her free from the blood gang and washed her in the blood Savior gave, it, gave her the Holy Ghost you all got saved grew up in Refuge Temple Church under the great man of God, the late Bishop where man Bonner, when you came to my service you were shouting and praising God why well, I don't understand all that quickening all that Holy Ghost Jesus said that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. You quickening it. All this, shh. that was the Holy Ghost, right? I don't understand how all that Holy Ghost that you had, all that quickening that you had, I say this in love, how can you have not used that same Holy Ghost to call the cops? I tell your mother, shh. I tell your aunt, when your aunt, your aunt already knew what was going on, shh. How is your father making you give, making you give him a blowjob? You should have plead the blood on him. Say, you old nasty dog. Shh. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to tell God, I'm going to tell my mother. 
We was all close friends. I love all of you. Sat in my heart when I heard this. Now he's locked up somewhere in prison. That should never have happened. All y'all was singing in the choir. That's why it's good to have a gift of discernment. A lot of things going behind closed doors. You got a lot of fathers sexually abusing their daughters and their sons. Now I discern that he got sexually abused when he was a child. He was a foster child, so he need to be healed. He need to be healed. If you've been sexually abused yourself, don't do it to your daughter. Don't do it to your sons. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Got to break this old generational curse. That same power could have gave you boldness to tell your mother, mommy, daddy is sexually abusing me. Your sister should have never have gotten stripped butt naked from your father who did it to both of you. 30 something years being sexually abused. Shh. Honey, you should have told your mother about this. I don't understand the mother. You supposed to have a gift of discernment, not trying to push you down. You've been married to this man all these years and didn't pick up what this man was doing, sleeping next to this man all these years, praying for you. We love you. That's why it's important for the sakes to have a gift of discernment because you, you could be married to a devil, got a demon in the house, sleeping with a monkey, a demon, and don't even know it. When you have the Holy Ghost, God will give you discernment. That should have never happened. I wish you would have opened your mouth and had your aunt call the cops and say something. Not let it go all these years and let that man manipulate you like that. I wish your brothers would have had said something as well, if they knew. Oh, come on, come on, come on. And it came finally out in the open, so thank God you were free. I know you're told, I know you said you, God told you to forgive him. I know he locked up. The man still don't want to repent. Lime God turned him over to a reprobated mind. Now, what I'm not understanding is that uh, I told your mother in love when I had a meeting a long time ago when you called me over to the house because I love all of y'all. You started taking naked pictures of all three of y'all, the mother and the two daughters. Had a picture hanging up. Now, I know the mother told me that you had something over your body so it looked like y'all was naked, but you should not even want to even look naked, period. In front of your sons are your brothers. Come on. Especially when your daughters have been sexually abused. Why is a mother taking pictures like that with your daughters? They can put it on the Facebook. Sinks of God are pushing like buttons. You should have been praying and say, no, 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 no. It'll be some spirit. Your spiritual mother should have told you a long time ago. Don't have pictures up like that on the Facebook. With your chest have showing and your daughters looking naked like that and know they've been sexually abused. I said, I can understand what they're going through because they're being traumatized and they need to be healed. I didn't say it. I had the meeting. I said, take, God said, take down the pictures. Take down those pictures. They need to be healed because they've been sexually abused so long. Their body has been exposed by their father so long that now they became promiscuous and now they need to be healed. You understand what I'm talking about? I had a conversation with the mother. You telling me, ain't nothing wrong with it. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You telling me that it's nothing wrong with it. Come on, come on, come on. So we had a fallout because I was in disagreement. The Lord said, take those photographs down because it's a gateway to lustful spirits. I said, your daughter's already been sexually abused by their father. So why would you take naked pictures with your daughter? And you supposed to have your daughters and you supposed to have the Holy Ghost. I said, I didn't love you, didn't listen, so I can't force it. So I love you, but I had to separate myself. Can I she gave me a friend request? I looked on the friend request. I still love her as a spiritual daughter, but I don't want her posting no pictures. She married now of her breasts exposed. I know she's in the club. I'm going to pray for her. But you can't serve Beyonce and Jesus at the same time. Beyonce don't love Jesus. Shh. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Shh. I have to do this because I'm led by the Spirit. I've been praying for you. 
spiritual daughter. But I'm not going to be accepting no friendly questions on the Facebook. And you still showing your breast and know you have a husband. Only one who should be seeing your breast is your husband. How can you tell your husband about Jesus and you ain't living right yourself? Then you wonder why your husband ain't listening. How he gonna listen? You ain't living right. You got to live right before you tell your husband about Jesus. You up still in the strip club. I got to help you. It's the truth. I don't want to see you with your breast exposed. You're already beautiful. You can't be talking about Yahweh, Yahweh, and you ain't living for Yahweh. Come on. Beyonce not going to save you. Beyonce needs to be saved. Naughty folk ain't nothing but devil worshipers up in Hollywood. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm preaching this out of love. I don't want to see you go to hell. I got some more phrase, Facebook frame requests by some other people you mean well. I'm praying for you. Other one friend requests me. I see some sodomite spirits around you. You mean well. You love the Lord, but you hang with the wrong people. Some of these ministers, you got in your ministry, I have gay lovers on the side and marry. There was one time there was a, a woman who married a pastor who was a sodomite. She should have prayed before she got married to that pastor. Some of y'all want to marry a pastor so bad so you can have the title of a first lady. Honey, you get AIDS, you become last lady. Come to find out she got AIDS by that man and die. You better pray before you better pray before you get married. I don't care if he's a pastor. I don't want no son of my pastors to request me. I don't want no demons on my Facebook. Come on, get right with God and do it now. Another young lady from request me, a good friend of mine. Love her as a sister of the Lord. Diamond young lady. You're hanging with the wrong people who are jealous of you. Open your eyes. Pray for them. Not trying to judge them, but he shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Come on, got to preach the truth. In season and out of season, got to preach the truth. I don't understand how this other young lady saved and sanctified got the Holy Ghost. Didn't have no bra on. Showing half of your chest. And you supposed to be saved. You supposed to have the Holy Ghost and know you a married woman and still showing your chest all over the Facebook. Come on, come on. You're already beautiful. The only one who should be seeing your private parts is your husband. And the only one who should be seeing your private parts is your wife. Not parading your body all over the church. That's why I have to separate myself. A married woman is not supposed to parade herself like that of a married man flirting around with different girls and know you have a wife. Come on, come on. The Bible says judgment. You must be getting out of the house of God. You can't hang with everybody. You said come out from among them and be ye separated. Time for the church to get the Holy Ghost all over again and take more than just a jump and a shout. The devil can dance and shout, but God wants us to live right. Not just go to church. The devil goes to church. Anybody can go to church, but when God is in your heart, you supposed to be the church. When you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So I don't want no women friend to question me on the Facebook and you still shoving your cleavage. You got to be careful. Just got married to my wife Priscilla, this is Chris Diamond's daughter, Lady Adams. So I got to be careful. I don't want no lust demons on my Facebook. I don't want no seducing spirits around me. <laughs> Come on. I don't want y'all leaving no numbers up in my messenger box and think I'm going to have some affair with you. I ain't the preacher. The Bible said, husband. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Women love your husbands. Don't be a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. I ain't playing around with God. God is not a joke. A young lady years ago got mad at me because I wouldn't put a ring on her finger. Before I married my wife, Lady Priscilla, at first I was interested at first because I knew her for a long time until you began to confess to me that you had sex with one of the men in your neighborhood. I said, oh Lord, the Lord made a confession. I forgave. I said, I don't know what disease you got. 
I know we all make mistakes, so I'm not trying to put you down. Her daughter annoyed me. She said, I, I can see Preacher Warren being a, like a father to me. That's a, a compliment. Because she looked up to me. Well, I saw in the spirit, the desert in the spirit, that you were spoiling your daughter. Not chastising your daughter. Daughter acting up. Having the favoritism. Yes, you got on your son, but you didn't get on your daughter. The son needs a father. The daughter needs a father too, but the son definitely needs his father who loves God. You was involved with somebody else and the Lord began to show me, even though she's a young lady, but she's lustful. She got no business lusting after grown men. Too promiscuous already at an early age. As I'm not getting involved with no woman with no lustful daughter. I, I, I ain't going for it. One time there was a young lady um, years ago, a woman of God told me years ago, she was engaged to a bishop. Praise the Lord, my brother. Hallelujah. Glory to Dios. God says, hey, Jesus. Whoa. I'm a higher Mosach. He's my Spanish good minister. Freak. Woman was involved with a bishop back in New York City. Called me on the telephone. She told me that she called the engagement off. I said, why? She said that her fiance, who was a bishop, was lusting after her daughter. The guy had given to talk to me, give me gift of discernment. I said, the Holy Ghost is telling me something else. I said, yes, there's a lot of stepfathers who lust after their stepdaughters and it's wrong. But I don't pick that up with this bishop. Matter of fact, this bishop was in Connecticut. Came from the Apostle William Brown, Salvation Livers, great man of God. I said, the Lord has shown me something totally different. I said, I'm not picking up that this man was lusting after your daughter. I said, she, she telling lies. Got to have a gift of discernment. I, believe, I don't believe every story I hear. That's the difference between me and me and some preachers. Folk tell me stories, but I don't always believe everything I hear. God give me a gift of discernment. Got to hear the other side of the story. I'm not a fault finder. I'm not a jealous preacher. I want to find fault with another preacher who is anointed because I'm not competitive. The Lord began to show me that this girl was lying. I told the young lady's mother, I said, your daughter has lied on this man. I said, I'm picking up that she was coming on to your fiance when you were not around. She was lustful. And the woman said to me, she said, oh my God. She said, my, my ex-fiance told me that, that she came on to him. I said, well, you should have listened. So I understand that was your daughter, but learn how to have a gift of discernment. Came on to him, to her future stepdad, when, the woman, when her mother was not around, just in half naked. I'm gonna talk on subjects that a lot of preachers ain't gonna touch on. And he told her, you are too young. See, I'm old enough to be your father, we ain't going to bed together. Well, that's a real man of God. He was a real holy man of God. So she got mad and lied on the man and said the man came on to her and he never did. Now, told the mother, and now you don't lost a blessing because of your little demonic daughter. Who's usually chastised and took her, her belt out and spanked her a long time ago and stopped spoiling your child. Ain't no daughter got no business cursing her mother out. You don't let your child tell you what to do. You don't let your child rule you. Your child came out your stomach. You didn't come out of her stomach. Hello, somebody. Come on. That's why I'm very careful. That's why I was very careful before I married my wife, Lady Priscilla. When I got involved with women with children, I said, that's a challenge right like there. Come on. Not trying to put these daughters down and sons down. I got to tell the truth. Something too lustful. And God ever give me a daughter, I'm not going to have my daughter wearing no miniskirts. Come on. She ain't going to have her cleavage showing. We're going to teach her how to live holy. I ain't going to have my son making all these babies and not paying child support. When God give us children, we're going to train them up in the Lord, train them a child and the way they should go. So when they depart, 
When they grow up, they will not depart from the truth. I ain't spoiling my children when God gave me children. You're going to teach them out of holiness at an early age. Come on, come on. Then that woman was being bossy. Pace a wine, come down the stairs. As I ain't got no woman talking to me like that, I don't talk to you like that. I'm very respectable. She said she was an evangelist. And just as bossy and just as masculine, not to put her down, I begin to pray. I said, I ain't going to marry this. Daughter got mad. So I ain't letting your daughter manipulate me either. I got to be careful. I said, I had to be careful who I get involved with. Even though she was anointed, I prayed for her and the daughter. I got to watch my back. I got to protect my reputation. I got to be careful. I don't go to women's house. God bless you, man of God. Praise the Lord. You're too blessed to be stressed. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the man of God, my transit worker friend. I don't, in, I don't go to every woman's house who invite me to their house. Especially if I'm married. I ain't going to a woman's apartment no two, three in the morning time. And I got a wife. Then she opened the door and she ain't got no clothes on. Come on. I ain't going to let her seduce me. I ain't got no time for it. There was a bishop, a man of God who's an apostle, up in Brooklyn. Everybody knows him. I'm not going to call him no names. Everybody make mistakes. Got to pray for him. David made a mistake, but he got up. His wife had a woman in a headlock in the church because the secretary seduced her husband. Now, your wife should never have to have this woman in a headlock for seducing uh, you. You should have put that woman in check. I said, I'm a married man. I ain't going to have my secretary seducing me. Hallelujah. You should have told that woman, I'm a married man. I ain't going to bed with you. I ain't going to your house no two, three in the morning time or coming back to my wife with a hickey on my neck. No. Only one who should be giving you a hickey is your wife. It's sad the pastor's wife had to put the woman in a headlock in the church because she chasing after her husband. The pastor is supposed to, supposed to say something. Supposed to have a different discernment. No. So listen, don't be fighting against my wife. If you're going to speak to me, you're going to speak to her too. Come on. God going to sing judgment and set order in the church. If you pastors know that you got women lusting after you and they're jealous of your wife because they want you, you're supposed to put that in check. Tell them women in church. I ain't going to have no adultery here. I ain't going to have no lust up in here. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let any man have his own wife. It didn't say another man's wife. Let every woman have her own husband. It didn't say another woman's husband. The Bible said in verse 9, it's better to marry than to burn. If you're burning in your flesh and your hormones are acting up, ask God for a husband and a wife. Thank God for the dove, that beautiful white dove that represents the Holy Ghost. But don't just get married only for sex, but get married because you love each other. Because just because a man or a woman can give you good sex, it does not mean they're going to give you respect. Love God first. You pastors are supposed to put that in check. If you got a woman chasing after you and you know you got a wife, tell them women, I'm married. I ain't going no bed with you. Hallelujah. God bless you, woman of God. I'm happy to see you. You are too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. Have a good day. God bless you. God bless you. Sorry that the pastor's wife had to have the girl in the headlock in the church. Because she had been chasing after her husband. The bishop should have said something to that woman. But they're wearing mini skirts. Got a cleavage all showing up in the church. God said, just holy. I'm not going for the women seducing me in no church. I'm already a married man. I'm sick of these old pimp preachers cheating on his wife, having sex with every girl he prayed for. The pastor going to hell for being a pimp. Repent, then God will forgive you. Like he forgave David. I'm preaching this way to help you. It take more than just, Lord, Jesus. It take more than just a hat. You got to live holy after we hat and preach. You got to live right. The devil sends temptation. 
You should follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I got another friend request on the Facebook. I'm going to pray for the other young man, nice young man. But I see devil worshipers around him. You've been saved for a long time. Your mother was saved. You've been saved for a long time. Hallelujah. But you're hanging with devil worshipers. When the Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separated. Darkness and light has no fellowship. So I don't want them demons on my Facebook. Amen, somebody. God bless you, woman of God. I'm happy to see you. Look how she dressed holy. So that's how a woman of God is supposed to dress holy. Because we living in day, women and men are they dressing like something from the club. God wants us to dress holy outside and be holy on the inside. Not just holy on the outside, but I'm not holy on the inside. All right, come on. Come on. There's a lot of folks who dress holy on the outside, but not holy on the inside. There was a pastor's wife had a woman in the headlock in the church because this woman was chasing after her husband. Now, the pastor should have said something to that woman when he was having an affair with the girl in the church. Now, I ain't going for that mess with me because I'm married. Why should the pastor's wife got to put the girl in a headlock in the church for going with her husband? When the bishop should have said something about that. The pastor supposed to put that in check. Yeah, that's right. Not her. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You got to be trustworthy. <sighs> that girl coming to my oh pastor. I'm gonna give you a lap dance. No! So I ain't getting no lap dance for you. I'm a married man. A lot of you pastors ain't trustworthy. The devil says temptation. Do we get tempted? Yeah. It's not a sin to be tempted, but it's a sin to fall into temptation. My spiritual mother taught me that years ago. Mother Ray. Right. See, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to fall into it. Because Jesus was tempted at all points, such as we are, but yet without sin. Christ was tempted. We all going to be tempted. The devil knows what you like. He'll send you a pretty woman. He'll send you a handsome man. The devil knows what you like, especially if you're anointed. The enemy is going to try to break up your marriage. He's going to try to tempt you. He's going to try to discourage you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the police force. There was a young lady who told me she went to the uh, up in refuge temple years ago. Spanish young lady, about 25 years old. Never forget it. And before I got married, she said, oh, the Lord said, you're my husband. <laughs> yeah, only 25 years old. I said, no, 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 daughter, I'm too old for you. <laughs> Other men were taking advantage of her. She said she liked older guys. Nothing wrong with that if you're of age now to get married. And there's a lot of young ladies who do like older guys and they get married to older guys. Right. Yeah, because a lot of young ladies are very mature at an early age. That's right, that's right, that's right. Hallelujah. Because my mother got married to my father. My mother was in her 20s and my father was in his 40s. But she was mature and they got married. Praise God. So a lot of young ladies are mature. But in this case, it was different. She was gone with men 65 years old. She was only 25. Men on up to be her grandfather. Some of you had no teeth. Not to put them down, so to put your teeth in your mouth and respect that young lady, she's too young. She got molested when she was a girl. A young girl. Young girl. By her stepfather. By the older man. So I began to figure her out. I said, that's why she became promiscuous. She needed healing. So I said, I'm not going to take advantage of her. Because too many ministers took advantage of her. She, she was going to the prayer room. She told me she was showing her cleavage. She told me out of her own mouth. She said the preachers were looking at her. Lusting. I said, well, what do you expect? Daughter, put on the bra. Praise God. I said, I'm going to help you get over your past. I said, I'm not your husband. Okay. I said, you think you in love. Right. You just met me. Just met you. She was mesmerized by the anointing. Uh -huh. She didn't even know it. She didn't even know it. You understand? Yeah. A lot of other ministers took advantage of her because she had looks. I said, I'm not the preacher. I said, I'm not going to take advantage of you, daughter. I may help you get over your past from when you was molested. Because she told me she was molested. She had a spiritual father. 
who is in ministry like me, who can preach. But the man cheated on his wife. Thank God he got it right. And he was lusting after her too. Baptized her in Jesus' name, but she never received the Holy Ghost. So how to help break that spell this man put on her? Because a lot of times a young lady see a handsome young preacher, and he's anointed, they get mesmerized. Was I can understand that. But then the men of God take advantage of these women. They ain't holy. Thank you. They ain't holy. They just got an anointing. Got, say it again. They just got an anointing. They just got an anointing. There you go. I like how you said that. Okay. They have an anointing, but they're not living holy. I don't take advantage of women. All right. Come on. Come on, man of God. Come because on. God can kill me right now. I'm scared of God. Come on. If I'm going to kill my wife, I might as well put down the mic and don't preach. Come on. I got to live holy. I'm scared of God. God ain't no joke. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So she got mad. She began to talk sexual to me. I said, I don't want to talk about sex. Let's talk about God. Let's pray. Because I knew she was bound by a lustful spirit. She needed to be free. It was a demonic spirit. She was bound by witchcraft and sanaria. I began to pray. She got mad because I never married her. So she, right, she admitted to me that she was in witchcraft at one time. But she wasn't ready to get married. She thought she was in love, but she was not in love. I just wanted to help her. Praise God. She didn't need a man, she needed God. Say it again. Christ. She didn't need a man, she needed Christ to set her free. Thank you. I like what you said, prophetess. She didn't need no man, she needed Jesus to set her free. To set her free. And then give it up a higher most satire and give it the Holy Ghost to stay free. Whoa, hallelujah. I like what you said. Thank you, Jesus. So the men of God taking advantage of women and men. So now the man who was a spiritual father friend requested me. He's a great man of God. He's anointed. Cheated on his wife, but thank God he got it right. God forgave him. I know he didn't like me. Cause I ain't gonna accept him on no friend request on my Facebook, but I will pray for him. We'll pray. I pray for him. Right. They, got to love the enemy. It didn't say connect with the enemy. But when you're anointed, you got to be careful who you connect with. What you Thank you. Oh. Even the ones who are saved. Praise God. The devil got spies. They want to spy out your liberty. Oh, hallelujah. Can I preach the truth here? The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. I got to live what I preach. Spell the word preach. P-R-E-A-C-H. -A -A. Take the P or preach, what you got? Each. Reach, right? Reach. Take the R of reach, what you got? Each. So preach means to preach to reach each. <laughs> if I'm a preach to reach each, I got to live right so I can reach each. All right. I got to live what I preach. I don't want to hear the Lord say, I never knew you. Right. I want to hear the Lord say, well done. Right. Whoa, hallelujah. Right. Well done. That good and faithful servant, well yes, done. Sir. Now I never knew you. Like the woman of God just said, Allah, I'm having anointing, but not holy. Not holy. Thank you. Let me give you an example. Without David God. was anointed. Thank you, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Come on. Come on. I know you're talking right now. David was anointed, but he was not living holy. He slept with Bathsheba, even though he was anointed. That's, right. That's an example of what you just said. That's right. So Come David on. had to repent when God sent the prophet Nathan and said, Thou art the man. That's right. Come on. He got in his face and said, Lord, create me a clean heart Come and on. renew the right spirit within me. Yes. Lord, forgive me. And God forgave him. And he never went back committing adultery again. Oh, look at God. I don't want to make no excuses and talk about, well, because I'm anointed, I can sin. No. God ain't got no respect to person. We should really supposed to know better, especially the pastor, supposed to know better. Not have this arrogant attitude like, well, because I'm a pastor, I can commit adultery. No, the pastor supposed to know better. Oh, come on, come on. There was a young lady, woman of God in, in Virginia, who called me up on the phone. She told me she had a dream that her husband was cheating on her with somebody in the church, with a girl. With somebody in the church? Yeah, she said, the Lord saw a dream. But the Lord told me that that dream was not true. You can't believe everything you hear. The Lord showed me she was cheating her husband. Not him, 
God bless you, man of God. I'm happy to see you. That's a real man right there. This young man take care of his son. We need more men like you. Keep up the great work, young man. We love you. God bless that young man. The young lady called me up. She said, I'll preach some wine. And she's precious. She's a nice young lady. I had to help her. She said, I'll preach some wine. Uh, the Lord showed me. Called me from Virginia. She was on the Rod Parsons ministry. She said, the Lord showed me that my husband was cheating on me. She said, I had a dream that he was going with a girl in the church. He, and he was assistant pastor. She just got married. She just got married. Never forget this. About, about five years ago this happened. So I listened to her. And I said, wow, God do show dreams. I said, but if the Lord showed you that your husband was cheating on you, having an affair with somebody in the church, God would have brought it out into the open. I said, because God works with facts. He works with truth. I said, he's not going to show you something and then don't confirm it. So there was no confirmation. There was no proof. And no confirmation that the man had an affair with you. I said, did you ask your husband? She said, yeah. I said, what did he say? She said, he said, no, I didn't have no affair on you, honey. I said, did he, didn't believe him. She said, she approached a girl in the church. I said, what did she say? She said, no, I didn't have no affair with your husband. She said, she got mad. The girl I said, then you should have did that because you had no facts. I said, because she, God gives wisdom with a gift of discernment, especially when, when, when people tell me stories, I got to have a gift of discernment. Because every story folk may tell me may not always be true. There's always two sides of the story. I don't run with the story. I said, so you should not have accused her because there's no facts. Why she was talking to me, the Lord began to show me. Uh -huh. I began to say to her, I'm not gonna mention no names. I asked her, did you tell your pastor about this? Because her husband was a assistant pastor uh -huh. and the best friend to this pastor. She said, yeah. She said, I said, what did your pastor say? Okay. He said, she said the pastor told her the same thing, that God showed him that his best friend was having an affair with a girl in the church. I said, no, 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 something don't sound right. So something about this story don't sound right. The Lord began to show me, do a gift of discernment. I asked her on the, on the, on the telephone, I said, what been going on between you and your, you and your pastor? She got quiet. I said, your pastor is married, right? She said, how do you know that? I don't know the pastor. I said, well, God has shown me. I said, what been going on between you and your pastor? I said, because God has shown me that even though your pastor is married, your pastor is lusting after you. And he wanted to see your marriage mess up. She got quiet. I didn't hear a pig pop on that phone. I said, hello? I said, are you still there? She said, yes, preacher one, I'm still there. I said, I'm picking up that your pastor desires you. I said, what been going on between you and your pastor? I said, admit it. I said, the Holy Ghost is talking to me. She said, okay, preacher wine. She said, uh, I do admit. She said, me and my pastor been having an affair for years, even before, we got in, before she got engaged to her husband. They was having it already. The pastor's a married man. The had an affair with his best friend's fiance, even after they got married, the man had, had an affair with his best friend's wife, and the man told me a pastor, he's going to hell, he don't repent. And he got a wife. It's a shame what goes on in some of these churches. I said, you didn't tell me that the first time. I said, you told me that the Lord showed you that your husband was having an affair. No, it was her having the affair. Her conscience was bonded her. Now, if I didn't have a gift of discernment, I would have believed it. Thank God for a gift of discernment. I'm not bragging. To God be the glory. Because I don't want to falsely accuse a man who didn't do anything. Now, when her husband went to work, true story, the pastor was going to his best friend's house, having sex with her while he was at work, while her husband was at work. It's a true story? True story. You know, I wouldn't make something up like this. Our God would get mad at me for making stories up like this. True story. This stuff is unbelievable, isn't it? Okay. It's crazy, isn't it? True story. I said, young lady, you should have told me that the first time. I said, ask God forgiveness. I said, you know you was wrong. 
I said, you ask God forgiveness, God will forgive you. And you gotta repent. And you gotta repent. Thank you. Which means to stop and change. Not just ask God forgiveness. Absolutely. Thank you. Because a lot of folks can say, Lord, forgive me, and do and still do the same thing. Yeah, you gotta repent. Gotta repent. If you mean it. If you mean it, thank you. You don't do it no more. Thank you. Yeah, this girl in the spell, a lustful spell, and she would lusten too. So I said, ask God forgiveness. And repent. And repent. I said, tell your husband, admit what you've been doing. She said, oh no, preacher Warren. She said, I just got married. I can't tell him because he might leave me. I said, tell him. I said, because part of repentance is confession. You got to confess. <laughs> Praise God. Confess your sin to God. But you got to confess it to your husband. She, she was obedient. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. David confessed his sin. And then he repented. And never went back to that sin that he confessed. Are we talking some deep stuff? Aren't we? True repentance. Thank you, woman of God. She went back to her husband. She admitted to her husband that she had an affair with her best friend. Of course, she was devastated. But you know what? He forgave her. He forgave her. I said, what a man of God. But then he went to his best friend, the pastor. Uh-oh. Do, 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 do. He went to the pastor because he found out his pastor was having an affair with his wife. The pastor, the pastor was all over the floor crying, asking forgiveness from his best friend. Guess what? The man forgave the pastor. I said, this is some man of God here. Of course he was hurt, but he forgave his wife and he forgave his pastor. That remind me of Jesus. That remind me of Hosea the prophet, who God told Hosea to marry the harlot. Not calling her a harlot, because she was also a young lady, woman of God, but she had a weakness. So after he forgave his wife, this young lady went back and had an affair with this man again. With the same man. He forgave both of them. He forgave his wife for having an affair on him with the pastor. Then she went back and had an affair with the pastor again. I said, you need to get out of this man's church. I began to rebuke the man. The man right possibly ordained this man. Right possibly probably don't even know what this man even doing this. So I began to rebuke the man down in Virginia. He got mad. I didn't care. I said, young lady, you need to get, get, get away from this man. And your husband need to get away from this man too. She was bound by witchcraft and a lustful spell. This man was a warlock, having affairs with other women in the church too. I said, this man is crazy. Mommy of Jim Jones. True story. I said, you gotta get away from this man. Get away. I said, I know your husband may not be satisfying you, but you're still married. God couldn't fix your marriage. But thank God, she got out of that church. She got out. Her husband left that church and they started their own church and now they're happily married. I, they, they had a restoration, got re, got remarried again, and now they got children. Oh. Hallelujah! Oh. At least she was obedient, and Jesus set them free. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. You can set you free if you want to be free. You can set you free if you want to be free. I could have easily went off her, but I didn't do that. I said, let me preach forgiveness. Because God forgave me for my sins. I mean, I had committed adultery, but I lied on people in the past. When I was eight years old. Father, God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you all today. Glory to Dios. Lazarus Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless those young men. They're on fire for God. Thank God for the men of God. God bless you. Glory to Dios. Lazarus Jesus. Hallelujah. They're praising God. Praise the Lord. They're praising God up in the trucks. Ain't that wonderful? The Holy Ghost is here. So Jesus gave her a second chance. Like Jesus forgave the adulterous woman. He that has no sin cast the first stone. But notice Jesus said go and sin no more. So it didn't mean that Jesus was for what the adulterous woman did. He was against the adultery that she committed. Because if Jesus was for what she did, he would never have told her go and sin no more which means to repent. That was an act of God's love and mercy. He gave her a second chance. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. So the young lady got molested when she was a girl. I'm not going to take advantage of you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm not a pimp in the pulpit. Praise God for the Prince of Peace.
There's a foot, a lot of pimps in the pulpit. I'm not the one. There have men of God out there. I'm not saying all preachers are like that. There are actually men of God out there. I'm not the only one. Praise God. So I encourage the ones who are real out there. I'm not going to take advantage of God's people. Because if God put me in charge, which God is really the boss, my job is to lead you to the altar. There was a young lady who came here. I want you to meet her, a Spanish young lady. I told her about you. I told my wife about her. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's my spiritual sister. It's my spiritual sisters right here. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. Y'all too blessed to be stressed. There was a young lady who came here and joined me. She's new. I said, I want to have her meet you. She got molested when she was a girl. Spanish. I said, you be the right one to talk to her. God bless you. I'm happy to see y'all today. Y'all too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. Have a good day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless the police force. Bless them, Lord. Bless the firemen. Bless the doctors. Bless them, God. And see. Thank God for them. I want you to meet her. She's a precious young lady. You're going to be a blessing to her when she hear your testimony. She's humble. I told her about you. My God. She got sexually abused when she was a child. I said, you be the right one to, to talk to. And God is saving her. And God is saving him and saving young men. Now, I don't take advantage of young ladies. That's right. I ain't no sex trafficker. Uh-uh. My job is to lead her to the Lord and not to the bed. Oh, hello, somebody. What you say, man? To me, preachers are leading girls to the bed and not to the Lord. The preacher going to hell. You don't lead no women to the bed. The only one you're supposed to go, the only one you supposed to go to bed with is your wife. That's right. Not your secretary. Come on, somebody. Come on. My job is to lead her to God, not to the bed. Gotta be trustworthy. A lot of these pastors ain't trustworthy. Hallelujah. God loves you. He loves you. And we're gonna pray for you today because he cares about you.